a very warm welcome to our morning service at Bolton Priory. A very warm welcome to those who are listening from wherever you come, in France, Chichester, Dorset, Somerset, Wiltshire, the community grows and we give thanks. Although the sunny weather has started to wane, Bolton Priory is looking very beautiful in the late spring and we have taken some more photographs which will be shared with you during the course of this service. We gather together this morning determined to continue bearing witness to our risen Lord, whatever avails us. Oh, come, Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with thy spirit. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon us, and I write all these thy laws in our hearts, we, we beseech thee. thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve honour and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou hast commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, so that, among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 45, beginning at the third verse. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither ploughing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. Here endeth the lesson. <laughs>
Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the fifth verse. Glory, Glory be to, to thee, thee, O Lord. Lord. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I did not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to thee, thee O Christ. Christ. And let us proclaim our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe, I believe in, in one God. God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was at Theological College at the time of the financial crisis in 2008. I recall it very clearly, as there was a brief moment when the country held its breath, believing that the banking system was on the verge of collapse. At the time, a fellow student asked me what possible lessons we could draw from the Bible about the financial crisis. He felt that the global banking system was so far removed from the Bible that it had little to offer in this particular time of emergency. I disagreed and replied that, in my view, the story of Joseph in the Old Testament was instructive. Thanks to Andrew Lloyd Webber, at least, we all know the story well. Having been warmed in a dream of a looming disaster, Joseph stored a surfeit of grain to make provision for the famine that ensued. 
As a result, his father and his brothers were able to share in the surplus, which he had prudently stored. And we heard part of this story this morning. Like the story of Joseph, we too are beginning to experience our own famine. Although we are still at the beginning of this crisis, the economic indicators are very alarming. One in three private sector employees are either furloughed or have lost their jobs. Three quarters of households have already suffered a fall in their incomes. And the government will need to sell £180 billion worth of gilts in the next three months to cover their costs. This is no ordinary crisis and we could be on the verge of the worst recession in our lives. However, thanks to the financial headroom built into our economy, we too have seen, at the same time, some extraordinary acts of generosity. At a national level, we are seeing help being extended across society to those who are suffering. Although the system is far from perfect, the intention to help as many of our fellow citizens as possible is admirable and a wholly commendable course of action by the state. And at civic level, there have been some ex extraordinary acts of generosity too, from the donation of food to food banks, the making of scrubs, to the heroic Captain Tom. And there is also anecdotal evidence of families pulling together to help each other out in this time of famine. Luckily, for some at least, there is some grain in the barn. Like Joseph before us, we all need to think about helping out in this time of national crisis. And I thank each and every one of you for doing so in so many different ways. But returning to the question posed by my fellow student over a decade ago and the relevance of the Bible. Approached in a prayerful manner, the Bible is never out of date and is always contemporary. These are not just writings composed in the distant past, but are relevant to all of us in the here and now. The Bible possesses sacramental power, transmitting grace to the reader, grace from which the current generosity derives. The story of Joseph this morning is put alongside Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit, which is to come after his ascension. Just as Joseph made provision for the time of famine, so God has made provision for us. In our time of famine, from the Lord Jesus Christ and in our nation, God has sent the Holy Ghost as our comforter. Just as God shares his Holy Spirit from yesterday, we share our grain today. It is a gift given in grace, like ours to our fellow men and women. Amen.
and let us pray. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek hearts and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other kind of adversity. We remember this morning all those suffering from the coronavirus, those in the United Kingdom, those from around the world. And we remember our brave doctors, nurses, and care workers who look after them. And we pray for those who mourn. And we pray for those who are unwell in our own parish. We pray for those who care for them. We pray for those who look after them. And we remember them in our prayers this morning. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. We remember particularly this morning Jim Dyson and John Gill whose funerals took place this week. And we remember their family and their friends at this time. And we remember those whose anniversary falls this week, remembering particularly Margaret Hendley, Norman Boland, Nancy Clough, Richard Logan, Peter Monroe, and Alice Leach. Lord, we beseech thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen.
Saviour Jesus Christ has commanded and taught us. We are bold to say together, Our, Our Father, Father, which, which art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done in earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and, and the glory, glory for forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Go in the light of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.